do I have PCOS or endometriosis or am I training too hard or I'm not sleeping well? What is the basis? Because when we start to see menstrual cycle dysfunction, it's the first kind of red flag, pun intended, to say, hey, there's a misstep here between energy in, energy out, and the way the hypothalamus is perceiving appetite, energy regulation, thermoregulation. My ideal right now is more of a sociological study rather than a physiological study, because I really would like to have a global study on menstrual cycle awareness, menstrual cycle conversations, trying to break down the taboo, but understanding where people are coming from that keeps creating this tabooness around the menstrual cycle. So let's go there. How, how should women be thinking about their menstrual cycle and making informed decisions about their diet, their workouts, their recovery, everything. Yeah. So the first thing I want people to understand is that the menstrual cycle and having a regular cycle is a really good sign of endocrine health. So when people are having menstrual cycle irregularities or dysfunction, then it's something to, to kind of like take a pause and go, well, what's inherently wrong? Do I have PCOS or endometriosis or am I training too hard or I'm not sleeping well? What is the basis? Because when we start to see menstrual cycle dysfunction, it's the first kind of red flag, pun intended, to say, hey, there's a misstep here between energy in, energy out, and the way the hypothalamus is perceiving appetite, energy regulation, thermoregulation. So if we try to cover it up by using oral contraceptive pills or other um, means, and we're not paying attention to that basic health metric, then we're, we can say that we're kind of missing the mark. When someone comes in and says, you know, I have irregular cycles or my period has stopped, instead of digging down to figure it out, they're like, here's an oral contraceptive pill. It's going to give you a period back, but it's not a true period. It's a withdrawal bleed. So it really does not indicate your endocrine health or help uncover what actually is going on. So that's the first thing. If women are tracking their cycle and they start to see their inherent patterns within their own cycle, then when things start to have a misstep, then it's an early awareness to kind of take a pause and, and really reflect, am I training too hard? Am I eating well? Am I not sleeping well? Am I traveling too much? So then you can put steps into play to kind of bring it back to keep you on a healthy path instead of getting into more of a sympathetic drive or, you know, getting sick um, just as the basic things, especially as we're looking to go into winter from um, summer. But for women, it's not quite the same. So when we're looking at women and the restriction of food intake, the hypothalamus is super sensitive in women because we have two areas of what we call kisspeptin neurons in the hypothalamus. One is responsible for appetite, meaning your ghrelin and leptin and satiation. The other is responsible for endocrine control. So this is your hormone flux, your luteinizing hormone, your estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. When you have low food intake and your hypothalamus is perceiving it as low energy, these kisspeptin neurons are downturned. If we look at the textbook, aspect of a menstrual cycle. And we say that day one is the first day of bleeding. <laughs> Around day 12 to 13 is ovulation. After that is our high hormone or our luteal phase, which lasts about 14 days. It brings us back to day one. We see that day one, first day bleeding up through ovulation, women are more quote like men, where we can access carbohydrate well, we recover well, as we get closer to ovulation, we have faster muscle contraction, we have more aggression, motivation, and we our core temperature is lower, our sleep is better as we get closer to ovulation, our immune system is fighting fit, where we're really good at fighting off virus and bacteria. But then after ovulation, there's an inherent switch because of the reproductive aspect where the body doesn't want to harm a potential fertilized plant. <laughs>